what does seem to be driving to a large degree the Millet phenomenon is this uh, extreme inflationary situation that uh, Argentina is facing. You mentioned at the top, Eduardo, triple digit inflation. Um, this is an article I pulled up from Daniel Reis back at the Cato Institute, arguing that Argentina should dollarize pronto. And uh, that's also central to Millet's platform that basically shut down the central bank, convert to dollars, allow people to use cryptocurrency more easily. Um, and down at the bottom of this, you'll see that uh, 59, that uh, everyone across the board seems to rank inflation as the country's worst problem. 59% uh, among the leftist coalition, 67% among the center-right opposition, I assume much, much higher among the libertarians. Uh, you know, I have one last clip that I'm going to play to kick off this discussion about uh, central banking and Malay's plan to dollarize the economy uh, where Malay is is laying it all out. So let's listen to what he has to say. And then, Eduardo, I'd like to have you react to the plan that he's put forward. Lo primero que hay que comprender es que el Banco Central es una estafa. Sí, es un mecanismo por el cual los políticos se estafan a las personas de bien con el impuesto inflacionario. El Bitcoin lo que está representando es la vuelta del dinero a su creador originario, que es el sector privado. Y después, en 1445, digamos, en el primer congreso de Génova, digamos, los estados se apropiaron de, digamos, de tener la exclusividad para poder emitir. Es que es el curso forzoso, que esta es la, la clave. ¿Por qué? Porque el curso forzoso es lo que le permite a los políticos robarte con el impuesto inflacionario. Uh -huh. El Bitcoin, no, digamos, tiene un algoritmo y un día va a llegar a una determinada cantidad y no hay más. Y puede competir con otras monedas. De hecho, compite contra Ethereum, con, compite contra otras. ¿Y qué es lo interesante? Que es la vuelta al sector privado. Uh -huh. Pero ¿cuál es el problema? El problema es que los estados no te van a querer ceder que el curso forzoso porque del curso forzoso te estafan con el impuesto inflacionario. Entonces, el Bitcoin es la reacción natural frente a la estafa que son los bancos centrales y que el dinero vuelva a ser privado. Y la contracara es que los, los políticos ladrones no te van a permitir ir contra el curso forzoso. ¿Qué es lo que pasa? Cuando vos tenés economías con alta inflación y el problema de la estafa es más claro... Uh -huh. Entonces, hasta poder discutir, como digamos, planteo yo directamente, eliminar el Banco Central. So, first of all, I'll just say that he demonstrates a better understanding, more competent understanding of Bitcoin than just about any politician that I've heard talk about it. With the issue of the central bank, that's really the kind of first order of business for him would be to shut down the central bank and dollarize the economy. Just in case our listeners are not clear on what that means, it, it means that U.S. dollars would be the accepted currency in Argentina. And it, it's something that's been done in other countries, Panama, El Salvador, uh, I believe Ecuador. So what, what, are, what do you think about that aspect of Millet's plan? Well, uh, first of all, I would say that... Uh, Central Bank was created in 1935 with the idea of lender of last resort. And uh, uh, what they really did, the politicians in Argentina, they have been financing the government at the expense of the middle class and the poor class in Argentina. We had an average rate of inflation of over 50% a year since 1935. We cut 13 zeros to our money And we st still this year we'll, we, we will have to cut another two because one dollar right now is 700 pesos. Three months ago was half of it. So the inflation rate, we are, we are just in the process of an, the third or fourth hyperinflation process in Argentina. So the idea of closing the central bank is very attractive because it has been used to promote government, to allow our polit politicians to build I don't know, uh, Versailles, the Palais of Versailles, all around to buy planes and to uh, live a very good life. What uh, Javier is proposing is the idea of just dollarizing the economy. I think if, if you're going to impose 
another uh, currency I would suggest that go back to gold, like Murray Rothbard suggested, just in the mystery of banking, where why dollar, a uh, uh, currency that is suffering 7 8% of inflation per year, and also is in, in the hands of some other politicians that uh, maybe they are not so corrupted as ours, but all, but uh, they are always tempted to print money. And you see by the current deficits you run in the state. So I think what is important is to eliminate the curso forzoso, the idea that you really need to use this money. And Mila is in favor of that. So he's in favor of 100% reserve banking, not to allow secondary, the issue of secondary money to the banks. And I think that's going to work. Of course, it's going to be tough just to get out of inflation <coughs> to a healthy currency. It's going to take time. It's not going to be made in one or two years. And let's see the reaction of the public. And of course, it's going to be boycotted. So the situation yeah. is going to be tough. But Argentina cannot live another year with this hyperinflationary process where 50% of the population cannot eat in a country this like Ukraine, it's like Brazil. We produce food and we are very good producers of food. So it's inevitable. I think the, the, the closing of the, you will see, I think that because of all these situations, you will see Javier Milei as our next president. Let's see if uh, he's allowed to govern and let's see if he has the courage and he has the character to implement the good measures and I hope that the social aspects, conservative aspects of Javier, he, he, he restricts himself to push legislation, uh, to uh, collectivist legislation. I hope that he really uh, leave that part aside and he, we can enjoy it after 80 years or 90 years of collectivism, a good government for Argentinians. We deserve it. I think that it's time for us to leave a little bit with a little bit of quiet and peace. <laughs> Could you give us a sense of just what it's like living under those economic conditions? I mean, uh, both the hyperinflation, uh, you know, Americans for the first time in my lifetime experienced some uh, inflation that, that we could feel year over year in recent years, but it's nothing like what's going on in Argentina and your, you know, uh, GDP from I think 2010 to 2021, there was no growth, economic growth. So what is it like, uh, just day to day, um, living under those conditions? When you go to a supermarket, they, 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 Instead of giving you a price, you need to scan because they are changing the prices all the time. You have wow. 10, 20, this, this month, they say that we'll have, the inflation rate will be 25%. So if, if the prices are not available, people selling items, they don't know what's going to be the cost of rebuying the item for the public. So sometimes they stop selling you and you start to see that merchandise, all the, yeah, the commerce goes down. So you see a situation where you don't have credit. I sold a terrain. I have in a country club near here, Buenos Aires. And let's suppose that you sell it for 300,000. So they give, bring the money to you, to the, to the place. That, and they, you have to count 300,000 bucks right there. You don't transfer through banks. You need to use cash. And of course, you can be robbed. You can be... so. Anytime you do a transaction, the, the whole transaction, you don't have credit. If you want to buy a house, you need to buy the house cash. Of course, that's impossible. And of course, the whole commerce is resented by that. It's a chaos. The economy stops. It's like in Atlas Rug, when you see that lights went down and things shrink and people are unhappy and they everybody walks like this and... Yeah. Uh, you have you can you cannot see a future and uh, people are just nervous all the time they become anger crime starts so we need to stop that and also there is no certainty in prices in argentina last year when i was there if you go to any store nothing has a fixed price for example if you want to buy this cup it's all about are you going to pay it in cash 
in six payments, 12 payments? Is it going to be with a check? Is it going to be with a credit card? Is it going to be with a debit card? And depending on that, the cup can cost you one, two, three, ten dollars, twenty dollars. So imagine that multiplied by everything in the economy. There's no certainty whatsoever. You cannot plan anything in 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 that uncertainty. Yeah, and uh, I mean that's it's that sounds like just a horrific the the uncertainty. You know, day to day uncertainty is just one of the worst things for uh, hu just human prosperity, human flourishing, not to not be able to know just something as basic as how much money you're going to need to spend and, you know, budget for that week. And hopefully Javier Malay's rhetoric will, it, it, if he wins, will will match the reality and, and some sort of, you know, market mechanisms and, and discipline will be able to like turn this around for Argentina. I do want to wrap up by zooming out of Argentina for a moment with um, Gloria. This I want to talk about this dynamic of socialism rising, causing economic destruction, paving the way for the kinds of reactions that you have expressed concern about manifesting as right-wing military dictatorships, which then kind of begins the cycle over again. It yeah. seems to happen continually all over Latin America. And I assume it's a cycle you're trying to break. What do you think the key to breaking it is? And how optimistic are you that it can be done? I do believe the answer is embracing individual liberties and economic liberties as one, like Ayn Rand said many decades ago, conservatism and obituary. Uh, the, the far right in Latin America is mercantilist. They don't want free markets. They don't want to discuss uh, drug cartel use to finance socialism of the 21st century. They don't want to talk about open borders. They don't want they don't want freedoms, period. They just want to have their uh, private property protected in ways that were very similar to the southern economy of the United States previous to the Civil War. Let's let's understand that, right? Mm. And I believe that that's not the way. That's why young people go to the left wing because the left wing has disguised themselves as feminist, LGBT, environmentalist, all these flags that of course they don't defend in reality, right? But but young people are attracted to that. My country, uh, after three right-wing governments that have been an absolute disaster, masters of corruption, from Otto Perez Molina, Jimmy Morales, and Yamate, finally, because of three really bad right-wing governments, now we have socialists with Movimiento Semilla. And I've been saying that as Anne Rand, you know, like conservatism and obituary, guys, you know, it's going to happen to us. And people are like, no, no, the left wing is not going to govern Guatemala until now it does. So I believe that that's the only way, embracing libertarian ideas. And I believe that what Javier Milei is doing in Argentina, it's a massive opportunity for libertarianism worldwide to really make a stance on what is it that we believe, right? And defending those ideas like Hayek did in Road to Serfdom from the Nazis and the fascists and the communists, all equally, you know, not, not, uh, not just in, in one side. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from my conversation with Gloria Alvarez and Eduardo Marti about the rise of Javier Millet in Argentina. For the full conversation, click right here. For another clip from that conversation, go right here.